Okay guys, welcome to this video. In this video now, we're going to go and deploy our private image as a fleet within AWS AppStream. In the previous video, we were walking through the configuration for the fleet. What I will do is I'm going to cancel that, where you can see that we're logged into our AWS console here, and we're going to create our first fleet. So let's click Create. Here I'm going to give it a name of APS for AppStream underscore FL underscore Demo1. I'm going to keep the name and the display name the same at this point. Now, that in most instances, the users may not see the display name of the fleet. They should only really see the display name of the stack. So that's the only time really that we need to be conscious of the names. And I, I, I keep these as, as administrative friendly as possible. Um, at this point, I'm happy with those options. So we're just going to click Next. You'll note straight away, the first option to come up is our private image. And you'll note that it also shows what apps were included in that image, that it's using the latest version, and that it was a general purpose compute optimized or memory optimized instance families that this image is uh, compatible with, which is really, really good to know because you don't want to get them confused or mixed up. You could also filter it by selecting private if you've got lots of private images, and you can also filter by instance families. So if I was to choose private graphics pro, all of the images disappear. If I choose compute optimized, memory optimized, or general purpose, the image is always available. So I'm happy with that image. That's exactly the one we want to use. Let's select it and click next. So at this point, we're now going to configure the fleet and say what the instance types are going to be. So at this point, we know they're going to be general purpose. Um, and how many vCPUs and memory we want to assign to them. The less the smaller the size of the instance, the cheaper they are to run. This is 11 cents uh, per hour, and these are 22 cents per hour. So I'm going to select the smaller instance. And here I'm going to choose on-demand fleet type, which means that when a user goes to connect, the fleet won't actually start. The instance of that fleet won't actually start until the user creates a session. So it can mean somewhere between a minute and a minute and a half of boot up time for that instance. But it also means that it's a cheaper running of our state um, to keep the costs down. You can set the maximum session duration and the disconnect timeout. So if a user closes the window, after 15 minutes, that session will be logged off and the user can only be connected for a full total time of 16 hours. Um, and we can change that, whether it's 45 minutes, an hour, etc., all the way up to 12. Um, I, I usually leave this as the highest because it's up to the users to decide how long they wish to use the session for. We're just making the applications available. Um, but it is important to get the disconnect timeout right because as soon as they've disconnected from the session, that will end the session that they were logged into. So if they're expecting all their work to be saved and still running when they come back 16 minutes later after they disconnected and it's all, all logged off and it's all deleted, then they're going to be very upset. So it's worth keeping that in mind and making sure your customers are communicated with and, and up to you how you want to set it. A longer disconnect will mean you'll have more instances with users running on the instances, but they may not be connected at all. So it's, it's really worth trying to figure out and fine tune this disconnect timeout. For me, I leave it as short as possible and make sure that the customers are advised that they need to save everything frequently. We finally get to the fleet capacity. I'm going to say a minimum instance. I'm going to have one. And for the maximum capacity, I'm going to say two. Remember, though, that you need to match the maximum number of users who can stream their apps concurrently from this fleet because you get one instance per user. So at this point, I'm only going to have two instances for this fleet. And we're going to leave it at that. And let's have a look at the scaling details. Now, this is where you define how the fleet itself will scale, how many instances will be added. So, for example, if the capacity utilization is greater than or equal to 75%, you can add two extra instances uh, in the fleet. Uh, you could tell it to add 20 instances. You could tell it to add just one, and only when this is at 100%. Um, and also, you could tell it to remove one instance from the fleet if the capacity utilization is less than or equal to 25%. So you can see it's very easy to customize the fleet and add lots of instances quickly, uh, depending on the users connecting and, and how busy the fleet is at the time. Uh, I'm happy with these settings at the moment. And effectively, when I log in as the first user to the first instance, that will be 100% utilization. It should then add another instance ready for another user to connect. Um, I have literally only one default VPC and only one subnet in that, so that's what we're going to create 
for this fleet. I'm going to select default internet access for that instance. You can spread your AppStream instances across two different subnets and two different availability zones for high availability. Um, you'll note there is no other subnet here, so I'm going to keep those options as the default. And you'll note finally as part of the challenge, this is where we can specify the Active Directory options. It looks very similar to what happens when you create your image builder. Again, as we don't have a directory config at this point, and we will do that later in the course, there's nothing to select at this point. So we can just minimize that and leave that as it is. But just know that this is where you configure the Active Directory domain options for your fleet. It's during the fleet creation. So happy with these default settings with our default VPC. We're going to click Next. We can review the options. This is just a summary of all the settings that we've configured for our fleet. I'm happy with that. We're going to go ahead and click Next as the fleet goes and builds. You'll note it says here you will be charged the streaming instance fees when user users are connected and a small hourly fee for each instance in the fleet that is not streaming apps. You will also be charged a monthly user fee for any users who connect to their stream applications in a month. That's talking about the RDS license fees. And also this one here is talking about effectively when your on-demand instances are sitting there with nobody connecting, uh, that's, that's the small fee that it's paying to basically reserve those instances. Uh, and you can learn more about the options when you click on the learn more. I acknowledge that I've read the pricing and we're happy to go ahead and create our fleet. Let's click create here in the final section of the wizard and we're ready to go. So you can see that the fleet demo is starting. It usually takes approximately 10 minutes for the fleet to configure. Obviously the more instances you want it to start with as a minimum will depend on how long well, it will affect the fleet build time. And you can see a lot of the information around the fleet uh, and, and how it's being built, etc. You see that it is starting up. Um, while we're here, we can have a look through the configuration or the console of the fleets. So here, for example, we can see fleet usage, so how many users are connected to the fleet. We can set tags, AWS tags for resources within this fleet so that it makes reporting and allocation of our resources simpler within AWS. You can go and see the scaling policies and even edit them now. And we can see any notifications for things here, like when the instances start, if there's any issues with the instances since they've loaded, or if there's any issues for the instances when it tries to join the Active Directory domain, things like that, all of those notifications will come up here. There's some actions that we can perform on our fleets. You can edit, start, stop, or delete the existing fleet. At this point, because it's not even started yet, we need to wait for those options to be available. And then finally, once that's completed, we'll be able to move on to stacks. And then we will link our stack to the fleet. And then, of course, the fleet itself is linked to the images, just like our very pretty diagram here, where you can see we've used our image builder and we've created an image. We've created our fleet, and that's connected to that image. And then finally, we'll go ahead and create our stack, which is linked to the, the fleets that we've created. And then the user, or the end user, and, and is pretty cloud over here, can log into the stack and access that fleet or those instances. I hope this video has been useful for you. Um, if there's any questions, do please let me know. I will end the video here now. We're not going to wait for this to start up. Um, as soon as it started, it's useless unless we actually connect to the stack anyway. Please do go ahead to the next video and we'll see how we can link all of this together now and get some users logged in. Guys, thanks very much for joining and we'll see you in the next video.